So uh, I just want to try and present a view of the totality of evidence here. So I'm going to present a series of meta-analyses. Now, the way these studies work is that each line here represents an entire study. And the results are, uh, it's called a forest plot. And the results are shown here on the end. And this uh, point here represents the average results. And the length of this line represents an error bar. So this large dot down here represents an average of all the results. So when we have a look at low-carb diets and weight loss across the board, the science says they help you lose weight. We apply this same methodology to looking at triglycerides. Again, down the bottom, they help you lose tri uh, lower your triglycerides. Your HDL, well, look at this. Big increase in the good HDL. What happens to blood pressure? Well, blood pressure goes down, and we know exactly why. It's that salt effect in the kidneys. And finally, we get a reduction in the blood glucose level as well, as we can see from this point down here. I'm going to also take you through a bit of a journey on some of the patient results that we've seen in the clinic over the last few years. So the first point here is that visceral fat, fat in the liver, leads to insulin resistance. And we've now started to figure out the pathways how. This is retinol binding protein 4. You don't need to know the name, but you do need to know that it correlates very well with body mass index, correlates very well with insulin index, and it's been implicated as a causal mechanism of insulin resistance. It's produced by fatty livers. You have a high carbohydrate diet, and in particular fructose is implicated here as most of you will know. And that leads to fat accumulation, the visceral fat and around the liver. That then directly leads to an increase in this retinol binding protein 4, and through various mechanisms, this is the molecule which actually contributes to insulin resistance. Now, I think you can see the problem here, because we know that insulin resistance leads to fat accumulation. This is a rast and rather nasty cycle here, and the only way to deal with it is to eliminate carbohydrates from the diet. So I was always impressed in the clinic when I'd have people come in and they'd be morbidly over obese. They would sometimes be 130, 140, 150, 160 kilograms. And they'd lose maybe 10% of their body weight. They'd still be grossly overweight, but their blood tests looked very, very good. They looked so much better than they were before. And this is why. This is a DEXA scan of that same patient you saw earlier. You can see the fat around the viscera here. A repeat scan six months later, after only about 9% weight loss, and we can see the visceral fat has all but dissolved. The fat that you lose first on a ketogenic diet is the bad stuff. This is magnificent. So a very modest degree of weight loss is going to be beneficial for your health. 